Developing a sense of ease in the meditation is important. Having your spot inside the body where you feel at ease, where the breath feels gratifying, Come, feels good coming in, feels good going out. is an important ally in the practice. Because when you sit down and look at your mind, many times you're going to see things you don't like. Sometimes they're memories of the past, things you did in the past that you wish you hadn't done, or things that you didn't do that you wish you could have. And sometimes it's urges in the present moment, things you would like to do but you don't feel right about doing them. You see them there in the mind. And if you're going to deal with them well, you have to deal with them from a position of not feeling threatened by them, not feeling weighed down by them. And for this reason, you need this spot where it just feels good to just stay right here. So work on developing this. The Buddha talks of concentration as a strength. And the images he use, uses to illustrate concentration usually revolve around food, on the one hand, and water on the other. And the concentration is food and water for the mind. It's what gives you nourishment, it gives you strength. Without this food and water, the meditation gets very dry. When you start being mindful of your feelings, mindful of your thoughts and emotions, as I said, you start seeing things that you don't like. Some of us try to put them out of mind, and in doing so we create this little area of the mind where everything gets shoved away. And of course it's going to come out. It can't stay there. So to deal with it intelligently, you've got to feel good right here. Then you can start looking at it and realizing that what you're responsible for right now is not what you've done in the past, but your choices you're making in the present moment. Lots of ideas come up in the mind. It's like a committee discussing ideas. How about doing this? Well, how about doing that? And you realize that you. And then about people with multiple personalities. I mean, really extreme cases. They get schizoid. Whether multiple personalities refuse to recognize each other. For, for most of us, though, there is a dialogue in the mind. And that's healthy. What's even healthier is when the, the skillful voices can win out. That's what you that's where you can make a difference in life. So it's important that you understand what's going on in the mind and how you can deal with it. The Buddha's teachings are primarily famous for two things. One is emphasis on suffering and the end of suffering. And then there's the teaching on karma. Some people have trouble seeing the connection between the two, but for the two, for the Buddha, they were very strongly connected. Remember the story of the night of his awakening. His first knowledge was remembering his past lives. The second knowledge was seeing that he wasn't the only person with past lives. Everybody in the world dies and is reborn again and again and again, and they're reborn in line with their actions, which are intentions. And these actions are shaped by their views about what's skillful, what's unskillful what their actions can do, what their actions can't do. And he used that insight into views and intentions to examine his own views and intentions in the present moment. That was where he was able to analyze the problem of suffering as it was caused in the present moment. That was the third knowledge, when he, this, this knowledge was able to 
bring him awakening, take him to the deathless. So the teaching he gave after his awakening revolves around these issues, these issues of what is the power of human action to cause suffering? What is the power of human action to put an end to suffering? And a large part of that requires that you understand action and the results of your actions. What it comes down to basically is this. He said the essence of his awakening was a principle of causality. It sounds abstract. But it's very relevant to what's going on in your mind right now. Your experience of the present moment is made up of three things. The results of past actions or past intentions, your current intentions, and the results of your current intentions. Now, things that come from the past you have no control over. They are going to come, but you can control how you react to them in the present moment. And that's going to make a huge difference in how much you suffer, say, from bad past actions. The first requirement is you develop lots of goodwill, both for yourself, for the people you've harmed in the past, maybe, and then for all people, all beings. This helps to open up your mind, get you out of your, the cocoon of your own suffering. That was one of the important messages in that second knowledge the Buddha gained. His mind opened up to the sufferings of all beings, to seeing that we're all in the same boat. And when you can maintain that larger perspective, you, you want to realize that whatever is unskillful in your mind is not peculiar to you. Everybody has been doing unskillful things off and on for a long time. And this broadens your compassion. You learn to be compassionate to yourself. You learn to be compassionate to other beings. And that, the Buddha says, right there helps to alleviate a lot of suffering. Because the impact of past actions on your mind at that point, if there have been bad actions, is a lot less. So compassion is an important part of the practice. Not only in alleviating suffering from the past, but in also preventing yourself from creating new suffering now and on into the future. Because you look at the, the way of the world and what lasts. Well, there's what lasts is the results of your actions. And they register as pain and pleasure. And actions that create pain just are a huge, needless burden, both for yourself and other people. You look around at the world, and you see so much needless suffering. It doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't, it doesn't serve any purpose at all, and yet it happens again and again and again. I remember watching my father die. He went through a long illness at the end of his life. It was not only debilitating physically, but towards the end he started getting dementia. I kept reflecting, I mean, what purpose does this serve? And you realize it serves no purpose at all, but it's there. And there's so much of it in the world. So why would we want to create any more needless suffering? There's more than enough already. So where do you start? You have to start right here, looking at your intentions. And learning to choose whatever comes up in the mind, whatever the committee has to recommend. You can choose what is the most skillful thing to do when you start understanding it in this way, that you have the choice in the present moment to make a break with whatever bad habits you've had in the past. This is where you really make a clean break with the past. We have this potential for freedom in the present moment, and we don't take advantage of it. That's the big tragedy of, of human life. Sometimes we look at our past and say, I'd like to make a clean break, but where do you make it? Well, you make it right here. It's each moment that you choose to do the most skillful thing you can think of, the thing that causes the least harm, the least suffering. So 
that leads to the greatest benefit. Each time you make that choice, you're exercising your freedom. And the more you exercise your freedom, the greater it grows. And the Buddha says if you exercise it fully, ultimately it leads to total freedom from suffering. There is that potential. So the whole purpose of the path is to strengthen you so you can make the most of that potential. Conviction in the principle of karma, that's a strength, because it emphasizes how important each decision is. Sometimes there'll be the, the jeering members of the committee that say, okay, you can make the, the skillful choice right now, but in another five minutes you're going to go back to the old ways. Don't listen to that voice. It's destructive. And you just say to yourself, well, I don't care about five minutes from now. Right now I'm going to do the skillful thing. When five minutes comes, then we can deal with that. But right now I'll make the best choice, because it's important. I mean, you could sit around and think about how the sun is going to go nova sometime and everything in the world is going to burn to a crisp. And then makes your actions and choices seem really minuscule. Well, don't think in those ways. It's your life you're shaping. It's your experience of pleasure and pain and the pleasure of pain of people immediately around you. You can make a difference right there. So that's what conviction and karma teaches you, that you can make a difference. And that what you choose to do right now is really important. And then you just stick with that conviction. That's persistence. That's another strength. You learn to be mindful in order to keep that view in mind. Keep reminding yourself, okay, do the skillful thing right now. If you slipped in the past, don't worry about it. That was the past. Now you've got the present moment, you've got a chance for something new. That mindfulness is another strength. When you keep at this, then you start hitting the strength of concentration. There is a sense of ease, there is a sense of well-being. Then not only the results from making skillful choices, but also makes skillful choices easier to make. You're coming from a position of strength. You're coming from a position of not poverty. You're, you've got a position of wealth now. You've got this food and water for the mind. And ultimately that leads to the strength of discernment when you begin to see through all the motivations that would lead you to do skill, unskillful things. And realize that you don't have to identify with them at all. They don't need to have power over you. So those are the strengths you need on the path. And as you develop them, you don't only have to listen to the narrative of the Buddha's life, you can start making the narrative of awakening real in your life as well. The trick is to get all of you together on the same boat. In other words, put yourself in a position where you can look at all the different voices in your head and start sorting out which ones do I want to listen to, which ones do I not want to listen to. And you're doing it not out of fear and not out of repression when you say, no, I don't want to listen to this voice. You're not denying that it's there. You don't push it off to a corner where it turns into the thing and starts sending its tentacles under the floorboards. And up through the cracks. You recognize, okay, there are unskillful intentions in the mind, but you don't have to follow them. Because you've got the freedom of choice. That's what the Buddha's teachings on karma are all about. That's what the, his teachings on suffering are all about. You put them together. We have the ability to create suffering for ourselves, but we also have the ability to put an end to suffering right here and now. So make the most of the Buddha's discoveries. and see what good things it leads you to discover in your own mind.